Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at three simple kitchen gadgets that work surprisingly well. Let's take a look in today's video. I have to admit, I was considering calling this three overpriced gadgets that surprisingly work, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But let's first take a look at the three contenders. Preliminaries out of the way, and let's get started. First up, I actually tested out the toaster bags a couple of weeks ago. Let's flash back and see how that went. These are reusable toaster bags, highly requested. I've got 12 of them in a package. I paid 13 bucks for it, so about a dollar a piece. These could be used for the toaster, the grill, oven, microwave, griddle, and freezer. It seems like people use these for going to the office when they're not sure about their sketchy microwave or traveling if they're not sure about the sketchy microwave there, or even people that might have certain conditions and need to keep their food separate. So there's a lot of uses for them. It seems like the most common thing I've seen people using these for are grilled cheese sandwiches, so I'm gonna try two of them. So I'm gonna do it both ways. I'm gonna do it with and without butter, see how they come out. Out, see how they clean up. So let's get started. Let's open this up and see what's inside here. Got some instructions which I, I will read these over. It says it can be used up to 500 degrees so that would actually include a lot of uses for the grill or the oven. Three sizes you've got small, medium, and large. I think the medium are supposed to be sandwich size. Let's stick to those for right now. I was thinking it was going to be more like wax paper but it's not quite that. Maybe a little bit. There is a slickness to it. It's very slick feeling. It feels different than it looks. Let's get a couple of grilled cheese sandwiches fired up here. Two with butter and two without. I'm gonna put one in the first bag. I believe you're supposed to have the handle kind of sticking upwards so when the toaster's done you just pull it straight out. We'll see. Now we gotta get this buttery sandwich in here. That should be interesting. Oh that's a that's a big mess. Oh come on now. One of the comments on Amazon did warn that it's gonna be difficult to get a buttery sandwich in this bag and now I believe them. Oh, this is not, this is not good. Why is this so difficult? All right, I did it. It's got butter on the sides. I got butter on my hands. I think the butter is not the way to go. I've got my two bags here, my buttery bag and my non-buttery bag. Let's get started. So let's head over to the griddle and the toaster and see how it turns out. I've got my Hamilton Beach toaster. This thing is very old, a war horse though. It's been through wars. Just put the bag in there and see what happens. It should fit, hopefully it fits. All right, well, it does fit, the bread fits. That's a good thing. I'll just push that down. It did seem to go in there, that's good. All right, so this has been heated up, the, the griddle's heated up. Let me throw this kind of buttery bag on there and see what happens. I do hear some crackling going on in there. It was just so difficult to squeeze in there. I don't, know, I don't think the butter is going to work, but let's see how, how difficult it is to clean out. What's interesting about this one though is that you don't even really have to use a spatula. You can just pick up the bag and flip it over. I think if I were to do the grilled cheese with butter again, I would use a bigger bag. The large bag would definitely be better for a buttered grilled cheese sandwich, but let's see how easy it is to clean before we get ahead of ourselves. All right, well, let's, oh, it looks brown. It looks very brown. Let me go cut this one open. All right, I'm gonna just try flipping the bag over and see what happens. The bread does look like it's been toasted and I do hear sizzling, so that's a good sign. I think my toaster bag is about done. Let's go check it out. First up, the toasted cheese sandwich from the Hamilton Beach toaster. Oh yeah, look at this. It looks melted. Let me cut it open. We have a nicely toasted grilled cheese sandwich in the toaster from the toaster bags. I should say toasted cheese sandwich. There's no butter in there, so it wasn't really grilled. Let's try the buttery bag now that was on the griddle itself. Now the thing about that is that I still got butter on the griddle because it was on the outside of the bag. It was kind of difficult. Like I said before, I'd probably use the large bag next time, but I was warned that putting a buttery piece of bread in there might be difficult, and they weren't wrong. All right, well, it looks like a nice grilled cheese sandwich. It got a little bit off because it just kind of slid in there. It's very greasy. Nicely toasted. Despite getting kind of messy, it did come out nice. Taste test of the toasted sandwich. Pretty good. Taste test of the buttered sandwich. Mm, grilled cheese sandwich. There's a lot of other uses for these. You could use it on an outdoor grill. They say you can use it for warming up things like pizza. Now, this is just a short test, but it definitely does work as far as using it on the griddle and the toaster goes. So I do think that the idea behind it works. I'm not sure about putting butter in there, but that's just gonna be a personal preference. One last thing on this, let me try cleaning these out and see how that goes and then move on to the next item. You're supposed to just be able to wash these in soapy water and let them sit, but look at this. This one got cheese in the bottom. This is the buttery version. Let's, uh, let's try that one first. We got some warm soapy water in here. I'm just gonna let these soak for a while. Try to make sure the water gets inside of them because that's where all the mess is at. So let me soak. 
and then clean them out. All right, these have been sitting for about maybe 10 minutes. I had to kind of fill them with water like this just to make sure there was water in where the cheese was at. I mean, there's still cheese in there. I guess I'm gonna have to use a sponge or something. They both have cheese in there. It seems like one's worse than the other, but they both have cheese in there. They say it's dishwasher safe, but if, if these go in the dishwasher like that, I don't know how the water is gonna get inside when it's closed up. So I think you're gonna have to do it by hand. All right, that's not, that's actually not too bad. That's not too, it doesn't seem like anything's sticking to it. It's, it's very non-stick. Just gotta make sure I get all the cheese chunks out and then we should be good to go. Oh, this one's really bad. Ew, not good. It could be easier. It could be easier. I'm gonna say that. It could be easier. All right, I think they cleaned up pretty well. I just gotta let them dry and they'll be ready for the next use. I will say that if you're doing something that doesn't have melted cheese in it, like just crumbs, it'd probably be a lot better to clean out just rinse it out but you know something like cheese you're gonna have to probably get in there i don't think a dishwasher is gonna get inside when it's closed up like that otherwise worked pretty well this is not a green pair of tv rabbit ears this is actually a bag holder that i bought I think I paid 11 bucks for two of these and these are kind of all over Amazon and Alibaba and AliExpress but they all kind of do the same thing they basically sit on the counter and hold the bag open while you pour stuff into them I tested it out a couple of days ago and here's what happened now, some things do require four hands to hold a bag open and pour something in there so if this works this could be a great invention a lot of people online seem to like these so let me see if it works there really isn't much to this it looks like this just goes up I think these just up and down for yes they do for different size oh wow that goes way up it's kind of cheap feeling it's like a rabbit ear it's kind of like some green rabbit ears from the 70s it definitely feels cheap I'm not even sure if it's worth $11 or not for two of them it feels like this is probably about maybe 50 cents worth of plastic this is not a suction cup it looks like it was be a suction cup that should be a suction cup but it's not suction cup would have been a great idea this is not it feels kind of non-slip let me try a few different bag sizes without adding something first I kind of wish I had done this before I tried the toaster bags because it could have held those open I didn't think that out didn't plan ahead on that one. Oh well let me try putting a bag in here and see what happens I think you just slide one side up and you slide the other side up and it's kind of like that this is as far down as it goes like this so I don't think you'd be able to get snack size bag this is a sandwich bag let me pour something in there and see how it works it feels pretty secure all right let's say Junior's on his way to lunch and he wants a healthy snack how about some almonds not gonna go easy on it I'm just gonna dump them in here let's see oh now I'm spilling maybe I'm going a little bit too fast Well, you know what? That's uh, that feels pretty sturdy. I mean, it's, it's, it just came off when I was shaking it, but it held it quite well. I'm gonna say that that worked out. Let me keep trying and see what else is next. You try a bigger bag. That was a sandwich bag. Now let's move it to a quart size bag. I think it's the same principle here. You just stick it in this clip right there. Now I got too much space down there, but I can raise up these arms. I think you want to have a little bit touching the bottom so the bag's not just suspended up there like that. How about some shredded cheese? That would be pretty messy transferring from one bag to another. So I spilled a little bit on the counter, but that's that's more my fault than theirs. But I mean, the the important thing is that it didn't fall over. It didn't spill. I mean, I spilled some, but it didn't spill any. And you just take the clip off. And seal it up all right I'm kind of liking this let's move to the big leagues now I'm gonna try a gallon sized bag with some liquid in there that should be a good test this might not be a fair test but I'm gonna do it anyways if it can handle this it can handle anything oh I want to I want to grab it with my hand we got to go a lot more than that a quart of water wasn't enough let me try another quart and see what happens so we're gonna be up to a half gallon here Oh, I want to grab onto it, but I don't want to help it. All right, well, it's got a half gallon in there. I don't know how sturdy it's going to be, but I got to keep going. Here we go, another half gallon. Oh, man, this could be a disaster. Can it handle it? Oh, can it handle it? I'm not touching it, but I'm wanting to touch it. Oh, wow. It looks like it's kind of bowing. And I don't mean the airplane, I mean it's Boeing. I can't even turn it because the non-slip surface is being pressed down so much. Let's see if I can do it this way. Ah, it's, barely do it's barely doing it. I'm gonna say a gallon of liquid is, is really pushing it. But on the other hand, it did do it. Let me just see if it'll hold one of these toaster bags. I don't think it's gonna hold these toaster bags because the toaster bags are so slick they're just sliding right out. So it really can't grip them very well. 
You can, maybe you can make it work. Not sure I would count on it, but maybe you can make it work. I think overall, it's a very simple design, but it actually works quite well. I'm not sure I would push the limit of, of liquid on the gallon size bags, but otherwise, it can go from a sandwich size bag to a gallon. It's pretty good. And that leads us to today, where I have one more to test out. That's my expandable total rack, which I have owned for six months now. The reason I decided to include this is because you may have actually noticed it in my Always Pan video. The Always Pan I did pretty recently and I actually used a total rack in there and some people wrote in asking what that was. So I figured it might be good to include in a video. In fact, let me flash back quickly to the Always Pan video and show you how I actually used it in that case. Can you help me get some of the water out. I'm just pouring the water out so we can don't splash so much boiling water on me. So far so good. All right, that's most of the water. You can use it to cool cookies, to dry your dishes, to protect your countertops. There's actually a lot of uses for it. So let me show you how the Total Rack actually works. First up, as far as storing the Total Rack goes, you can actually roll it up. And then there's a little tab right here keeps it in place. It goes into a drawer quite nicely. As I noted earlier, this is the only kitchen rack really that I've seen that expands like this. So you actually can get quite a bit of coverage for it. It goes from 11 to 21 inches and it can go in the oven up to 400 degrees. These silicone ends actually help it from not slipping off the side of the sink. So let me show you a few other uses for the total rack. When you expand and put it over the sink, it's actually quite solid. Even though it rolls up this way, it's not gonna give that way. The total rack can also be used as a trivet. I got some water boiling here for some tea. Protect your countertops. If you wash dishes by hand, you can use it as a drying rack. One thing I think that's interesting about the total rack is it can go inside of a pan. Say you make bacon in the oven like some people do and you don't want to get against the surface, you can put this here as a rack or say you're making some fried chicken and you want sort of a convection effect there, you can put it on top of that. It can go in the oven up to 400 degrees. You can use it to, to wash off your vegetables and, and let them dry as well. In a case like this, you could put your colander on top of the total rack, drain your noodles through there. Another use for the total rack would be to actually cool off cookies when they come out of the oven. That would actually work quite well for them. Let's wrap this thing up, shall we? I know I've had some long videos lately. I'm trying to keep this one a little bit on the shorter side. As far as the toaster bags go, now on my test, I probably should have used a larger bag for the grilled cheese on the griddle. Do by the bag holder work it would have been easier to get the grilled cheese in there with butter on it but I think that the toaster bag does what it's supposed to do the thing about the toaster bags is just because they get the mess off your surface doesn't mean there's a mess to clean up you still have to clean the bags so really it's a matter of deciding which mess is going to be easier in the case of a toaster it'd probably be easier to use the bag but in the case of a grill it may not be easier but with that said if you're going to be using a public grill you may not want your food to touch that and then the toaster bags would be good for something like that as well I think the toaster bags definitely have some uses but 13 bucks for 12 might seem a little bit expensive for what you get. Now, as far as the bag holder goes, I paid 11 bucks for two of these, but after perusing Amazon for a while, I realized there's a bunch of vendors that sell basically the same thing. It looks like most of these vendors, if not all of them, got them from Alibaba and they were just reselling them. So the prices vary anywhere from six to $12. I don't think there's gonna be a significant difference between what I bought and what other vendors are selling. They probably all came from the same place. But with that in mind, even though it's cheap and even though you can probably get it even cheaper than I paid for it, I do think the bag holder works quite well. It's one of those things that once you you've had it you don't really want to go back because having the extra set of hands is quite useful. All right, as far as the total rack goes, there's some pros and cons. The pros would be that it has a lot of uses, it's very versatile and it works well. It does all the things it's supposed to do quite well. The con would be that this is 30 bucks on QVC. I haven't seen this on Amazon yet and there really aren't any replacements for it that do exactly what this does. There are quite a few of them out there that don't expand and there's a couple small ones that do, but none quite like this. So if you really want the total rack, you're going to have to shell out 30 bucks. I do think if you buy the total rack, you will be happy with it. But do you want to spend the 30 bucks? That's going to be on you. Well, that's all I've got. If you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.